First thing we should talk about are the requirements for installing Windows Server 2008. Basically, you need a, a computer with a processor of a, a minimum of 1 gigahertz. And um, as far as memory, um, 512 megabytes of RAM is rec recommended. Obviously, the more RAM you have, the better the performance. Um, disk space requirements as well. Um, you should have storage space greater than 20 gigabytes uh, in size. So we're going to go ahead and install Windows Server 2008. Um, we're going to be using Microsoft Virtual PC for this demonstration. Um, although the process of installing uh, Windows Server 2008 is identical regardless if it's uh, virtualized or in a physical uh, computer. Go ahead and launch uh, Virtual PC. I already have a virtual machine uh, dedicated for this installation, although there's no operating system installed. So I'm going to go ahead and start my virtual machine. And Windows starts by loading the, the files found on the DVD media. If you installed previous versions of Windows Server, you'll notice that Windows Server 2008 has a completely different look and feel. Um, it's much, much easier to go through the installation process, and typically the installation process is uh, also much quicker. So we, we'll begin by providing uh, the information on the first uh, screen, which is the language, uh, time, and currency format, and the keyboard uh, or input method. And we'll take the three defaults and click Next. At this time, you also have an option to repair your computer if you had a previous version of Windows Server 2008 running on the system. Um, we're doing a brand new installation, so we're going to click on the Install Now button. The nice thing you notice about Windows Server 2008 is that the DVD that you'll be using basically has all the versions of Server 2008 uh, available. Um, in this case, these are all 32-bit versions, um, although there is a 64-bit uh, a uh, version available. Um, in this case, we can install either standard enterprise, data center, uh, either full or core installation. For this demonstration, we're going to do a full installation of standard edition. So I'll click Next. After you've read through the uh, license terms, we're going to go ahead and just click on the checkbox which says Accept License Terms and click Next. In this case, we're not doing an upgrade because there is no uh, operating system uh, on this uh, computer. We're going to do a custom, which is basically a new installation. And we'll go ahead and uh, click on that. Now we've been provided with um, a look at the um, disk space that's available to us. Um, I have a 32 gigabyte drive that's connected to this, um, this uh, machine and we're, right at this moment there are, are no partitions uh, set up so we're just going to take the, the entire unallocated, unallocated space for this installation. Um, we could click on the, the drive options and um, do some more advanced settings like for instance uh, deleting any partitions that would be listed here, uh, formatting if we had a, uh, a partition that was already formatted, uh, we can create new partitions if we wanted to set up something customized at this point or extend existing partitions. In this case, we're just going to take the default, um, take the entire unallocated space. Click Next. At this point, Windows will begin copying the files from the DVD media onto the local hard drive uh, to continue the installation. As you notice, um, it copied the files fairly quickly, and at this, uh, the next step is for Windows to begin expanding the files. After that, Windows will install the features, any updates, and complete the installation.
Okay, the server has restarted for the last time. Once the server comes up, uh, you'll be able to complete the installation. Okay, we're going to log in for the first time and we need to set the uh, password at this time. Make sure the password you set is complex. And we've finally been able to log on to the desktop for the first time. Okay, so after you've logged in successfully, you'll notice that the initial configuration tasks window will appear. Unlike previous versions where these settings have been configured during the installation process, with Windows Server 2008, it's done after the installation has been completed. This is where you'll be setting the time zone, configuring the networking properties, joining the computer to a domain, setting your automatic updating and feedback settings, and other uh, items such as adding roles and features. Once you've completed these tasks, you no longer need this window to show at logon, so you can click on the uh, checkbox to do not show at Windows logon and close the window. Well, this completes our demonstration of installing Windows Server 2008. Thank you for watching.